Well, hello. Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> hello and welcome to episode 36 of Carvers and Creators, a weekly demonstration and discussion with pumpkin carvers, sculptors, and multi-talented artists. We humbly ask that you please consider giving us a like and a follow on the platform you're watching us on. And please let us know in the comments where you're watching from and if you have any questions for our carvers and our special guest. My name is Michael Mondragon. I'll be running the show, moderating comments, and chiming in from time to time. Let's meet the Carvers. First, he is an artist and sculptor from Boston, Massachusetts. He is the 2019 champion of Food Network's Outrageous Pumpkins. Paul Dever, welcome. Happy, Paul. happy Thursday, everybody. Hey, Maddie. Mickey, Annie, how are you? <laughs> Next, he is a multimedia sculpture artist from Tucson, Arizona, and the finalist on Halloween Wars 2019 on the Food Network, Matt Harper. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good, to be, good to be here. Our guest today is a regular guest here at Carvers and Creators. He is a sculptor, wood carver, artist, author, and illustrator from Oklahoma. He is the 2020 champion of Halloween Wars on the Food Network. Please welcome Dan Miller. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, welcome. Glad to be back. Welcome back. Right on. How's your sound? How's your sound, Dan? Do what? <laughs> what would you call him? <laughs> Nailed it. How's, how's my sound? Nailed. <laughs> Last time Dan was here, we couldn't talk about the show he was on because it was during. I think it was while the show was airing, and now we can say he's the champ. I don't think right. I, right. I remember right. It no, we did. No, there was an episode. He's been on so many times. You're forgetting. There was one after that where we had the two of the the two oh, Dan's right. on. We had we had Dan and two Dan's. Danny Kissel and Dan Miller. That's right. The now Dan now yeah. Dan gets his own. He gets his own episode as champ. Hell right. yeah! Yeah. Well deserved. Well deserved. <laughs> Welcome back, my friend. <laughs> yeah, we're always glad Thank to have you, you, Dan. Glad to be back. So let's uh, let's look at our carvings from last week. Uh, Matt, here is yours. <laughs> charismatic circus freak. A charismatic circus freak, and, and and like everybody else, and I didn't really even know the guy's name until I started looking for for photos of him. But the guy's name is Schlitzy, mm -hmm. and he was a uh, uh, performer. He was he died at age seventy, which is kind of interesting. But he was he you know a guy who was a circus performer from uh, 1901. I guess he was born until right before he died. But um, that's where my mind went, and that's where Paul's mind went. So once he posted that, that guy, I was like, ah, oh, damn it. You know, I, I should have picked the uh, two-headed lady or whatever. But anyway, but uh, <laughs> that's <laughs> probably I think alike, Matt. You know, we share a brain that's sometimes. It. <laughs> yeah, it's quite amazing that you guys went exactly the same place. And uh... – no, they both look tremendous. Yeah. Um, and and uh, different yeah, styles, you know. Yeah, well, Schlitzie was from the, the movie world. as well. Yes, freaks, right? Yep. Yeah. See, my mind went a little bit. I, I I looked up the movie and then also the American Horror Story season circuit that they had called uh, Freaks. Oh, okay. So they yeah they did a pinhead version of that, and I kind of tried to incorporate a little bit more of that. So. Kind of hard to make that shaped skull out of a butternut. Surprisingly, looks like yeah. Burton. I knew I knew the ears and the and the teeth were going to kind of sell it. You know. Uh, yeah, to, that's you're right. Um, but you know that little that little top knot of hair and stuff like that. So, I it it, it was a fun one to do uh, until, until I saw Paul was doing doing the same thing. So you know. Oh, uh, that well, nose came out great, man. That nose Thank is you. awesome. <laughs> Hard to believe yeah. when they start out oh, it's yeah. an edible product. <laughs> I know. And and don't forget that it became a bisque later in the day and we just enjoyed it. <laughs> Whoa. Sam, yeah. hell happened there. Uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me again now? <laughs> yeah, you look it, it sounds great, looks great. Perfect. Perfect. Beautiful. Well, I also want to show our guests um, last week, Jody and Mike Moss. Uh, they actually oh, completed right, theirs. Yeah. Oh yeah, and uh, right. Jody oh, sent me her. Th this is all uh, probably what uh, four, four or five feet tall, and oh, oh well, yeah, like five huge. by five. Yeah, pretty huge. So um, yeah, that was that was her take on awesome. it. 
Yeah, it, it's uh, really I beautiful. It. I, I, I was going to post it on our uh, Instagram, uh, which I still have to do. I've been getting uh, sidetracked uh, f- from work all week, so uh, I have not been able to do that, but I will put those up because she has some other alternate versions of this. And also oh Mike uh, did his as well. This yes. was his uh, made out of foam core and and uh, paper cardboard. as well. Like cardboard, yeah. And uh, I even have the part where uh, the, the, the extra accessory, the disco machine, uh, mask on there, which was <laughs> tremendous, a very nice touch and, uh, and, uh, super, on- awesome. super yeah. honored to get yeah. to have that. Well, Dan, um, Amazing. I'm not sure if you've taken the, yeah, I, you have taken the challenge. So you've met, you've met the hollow wheel. You've met the center spinner, correct? Yeah. Yeah. The wheel of wonder. <laughs> the wheel of wonder. <laughs> so, uh, Paul's going to, um, spin the wheel and, uh, we'll make the deal, I guess. Oh, oh. <laughs> like a wrapper over there. All right. Happy Thursday, everyone. Yeah, uh, we're gonna go to the wheel this week once again. The 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 wheel of death, it seems like for Maddie and I. And this week, <laughs> Danny as well. Oh, wheel of horror. Horror. That's for sure. Uh circus freak is off the board, and we added movie character. We're gonna go, we're gonna have to start opening up the genre a little bit, and we're gonna go with just a random movie character. So okay. uh most of the emotions. Are there so let's hope for a good one okay right, let's do it then shall we god bless yeah. us all oh youthful youthful okay youthful. I so somebody who's youthful now. all right okay we have to have a young this has to be a young squash of some sort that means Try no to whack my elbow again here we go A sulking youthful character that oh. makes sense could be the kiss of death because it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh get goodness. your tools, everybody, because we're gonna do something that has to be young and Good pissed boy. off. I'll let hold on while I call my kids downstairs and tell them to take a video. We need them to cry a little bit or something. <laughs> yeah, I'll be like, You guys are punished. Why? It doesn't matter. Yeah. Thank you. Tell me your face. <laughs> Bring your sulking, youthful character faces in here. <laughs> yeah. What did I do wrong? I'll tell you when you get here. <laughs> you did everything wrong. Get in here. Um, yeah, so we're going to give you five minutes to grab your tools, pumpkin, squash, any other perishable item. If you're going to be carving or uh, even drawing with us, doing what you will, yeah. uh, be creative and uh, let us know in the comments if you're uh, participating. Uh, so a sulking, youthful character. All right. Yes. So while we and do yeah, that, let's, let's, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Well, you were mentioning different forms of creativity. I mean, if you want to write a song about this episode, feel free. You know, right. I mean, let's a, not, a one, okay, let's not one, leave musicians out of this, okay? You want to yeah, jump? How, how about a one-man interpretive dance? Oh. <laughs> that might be my favorite thing ever. Yeah, yeah. You have to, you have to wear all black and you know, big. You know, anyway. That's, that's how I do it. Well, we we went off on a tangent. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Early, early. That's not good. That's not good. And we haven't even started. Or is it? No. Or is it? No. So before we do uh, any uh, art on our show, we like to go around the room and uh, uh, do a toast. Uh, Dan, what are you drinking tonight? I am drinking Old Fire Rye Whiskey. We made in Oklahoma, oh. and it's really good. <laughs> Old nice. Fire, I love that name. That is a great yeah. name for a whiskey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That looks good. So, uh, Paul, what do you got? All right. So tonight... I'm gonna have a bee hoppy. Oh, look at that. See if I can get this friggin' thing to focus. There we go. Bee hoppy nice. from Wormtown Brewery in Worcester, Massachusetts. 6.5 by volume, 70 IBUs. Look at Mickey, it says it right there on the other side. There you go. Oh, that's, yeah, that's, again, right in my wheelhouse. Don't worry, bee hoppy. That's right. <laughs> There we go. And Matt, what do you got? Mickey, I got a holdover from uh, St. Patty's Day. <laughs> oh, uh, classic. I went with a milkshake, milkshake beer today. This <laughs> is, but it's got the, you know, the little, uh, what do you call it, nitrogen or the 
widget. Also, nitro. Yeah. And the best part about these is just just that you know watching the the uh, that head and all the uh, uh, bubbles and stuff. It it literally is like a a, a chocolate shake. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it's as many calories as a chocolate shake too. But I mean, yep. the taste and the buzz isn't bad either. But you know, it's fun to watch too. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna try drinking it. <laughs> you should give it a shot. It's delicious. Even better. Yes. Even better. Better than it's looking like, at it. It's like drinking about three loaves of bread. Very, very hey, good. <laughs> Mickey, what do you put on my bread? I like I bread. have uh, from Beechwood uh, Brewing the uh, Citraholic Super Citrus Whoa. IPA. Um, uh, natural grapefruit flavors in this one. Uh, 70, uh, 7 7.1 ABV, 70 IBU. Um, 16 FLOZ, so uh, Ooh, going down nice. That's, that's an higher <laughs> number than normal. Wish I had the number of money. the beast. <laughs> <laughs> well, cheers, everybody. Have yeah, a good thank day. you so much. Bottoms up. Although Dan's drinking his neat, and I feel like I'm not not close to being a man in this this episode. He's just mm -hmm. chugging straight whiskey. I'm telling you, that stuff will hurt you. You don't want to change it or nothing. That's okay. <laughs> so get us some oil fired, Paul. Next, next, uh, next episode, we're drinking oil fire. Bring, drink an oil fire. Mm. I, I believe that episode, that episode will be called dumpster fire. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's all catch fire. Yeah. So Dan, while you get, you're getting, getting road, guys. While you're getting started, um, uh, tell us a little bit what what you've been doing recently. It's been pretty interesting that you were talking about it before the show. Yeah, I got I was invited by Tater Edwards to join his multi block team to compete in the World Cup ice sculpting championship in Fairbanks, Alaska. So I spent oh, three weeks cool. there. Yeah, thank you. The first two weeks we were building the ice park. That was another niece. <laughs> uh, and so the first two weeks we built games and, car and, and carnival stuff out of uh, ice. And then we got to do some snow sculpting. That's a nine foot T-Rex that I, I got to carve. And then uh, the last week I was there, we started a multi-block competition. So you have these six foot tall, four foot wide, four foot deep blocks of ice. And you get nine of them. And you can arrange them however, but, you know, have whatever shape. And you have to cut them. And the hardest part is fusing them together. But we made a 40, from tip to tip, it was 42 foot long dragon. And wow. uh, Tater came up with the concept. It was called Super Sneaky. And so there's a knight here, an ice cream stand, and then this dragon head, and the tail's behind the knight, right? And so he's reaching out for the free ice, and the dragon's going to clobber him. But in the final hours on the last day, the head fell. And oh, no. That was, yeah. So we scrambled. We had 30 minutes, and we scrambled to try to get it all pieced together. And then four minutes away from the buzzer, or maybe five, the head was still off. So we fuse it back on. And by the time we let go, we were four minutes past the buzzer. So we went overtime and didn't get qualified. But it was a ton of fun. May I be the first to say that's bullshit and they should have given you four more minutes. That's right. <laughs> four minutes. That's what I said. Four more minutes. You spend all that time working on it, it comes down to four minutes. Yeah. And you yeah. went all the way well, to Alaska. Yeah. The, well, the, the head's laying on the ground. And I look at Tater and he looks at me. And Tater says, well, and I said, yep, mama didn't raise no sissies. So he said, mine neither. So we put the head on. We knew there was a risk. You know, you could get scored with a with a broken piece and maybe still placed. But uh, it was worth the risk to try to get it on there, we thought. We went over. Yeah. So how long were you up there? One of the cool things, though, is my youngest son is 16. He got to come. He's a sculptor. Yeah, he's been, I've been teaching him. Oh, nice. He's been doing really well. And, but he got to come as a volunteer. And oh, the day wow. before competition started, the, uh, one of the teams, the Stuber team, that's their last name, um, had a guy come up sick. So they invited him to join. And <laughs> and in the end, they won bronze. My, little, my, my baby boy got a bronze medal. And all the way home, he's like, Dad, where's your medal? I was like, ah. just <laughs> <I'll get it. laughs> No words. <laughs> that's awesome. You're like, I'll take that. That's not mine. Thanks, son. Like, do what? You you like that? Yeah, that's mine now, son. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, right. You can enjoy that new bronze smell. I'm gonna get me a gold next year. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. But I got to I got to meet Dave, David Smith. Uh, you know he was on this previous season. Harry Pumpkins has been on a lot of. Shows. Uh, cool. He was actually on the gold medal team. The, oh really? I got to meet a lot. 
I got to meet a lot of pumpkin carvers at a house sculpting thing, so it was kind of it was really cool. And and this this is your first push into uh, carving ice. Yeah, and so yeah, so Tater invited me, and it was just to come help a boot camp. And then he said oh, there might be an opportunity to compete, and I said, man, I'd really like to do it. And he said, cool, man. So he wasn't going to compete with the multi block, so he put together a multi block team so I could join it with him. And then there we went, and it, I loved it. It was great. How it, cool is that? Uh, Oh, it was it was awesome and ice. I liked it. It was a uh, they had oh, yeah. funny names for stuff. like they have pickle forks and, and stuff like that. And I made my own chisels to go up there, and I thought, oh yeah, that's cool. Chisel's a chisel. Chisel is not a chisel. <laughs> There's our surgical <laughs> shark. <laughs> so oh. it was a. So it was it was pretty it was it was a learning experience. It was really fun, but I'm anxious to go back next that's year. Amazing. Very cool. Hey, you know, put good word in for Tater. I was on the same season with him. He, we're, we're apparently bros. You know, we, we you know, we're, we died yeah, on the battlefield I was, together. I was actually talking to Tater about you today. I talked to Tater and told him he was going to be on there. He didn't have nothing better to do, but he better watch. He said, oh, yeah, why? I said, because I'm going to talk about you. If you want to know what I said, you better watch. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, hi, so Tater. What's, some, what's something about ice, ice sculpting that, um, that we may not know uh, beyond the obvious? Uh, it's cold. cold. <laughs> it was <laughs> the coldest day there was minus forty two, and then the warmest day we had a heat wave. It was two degrees. Ooh, so, oh my god! And if, and if it gets so cold, you can't you can use certain tools on it because it'll break. You know, it can't oh, be like wow. a minus thirty. It was almost too cold to mess with the ice. But I don't know the the strangest thing about if you have the right tools, it carves easy. If you don't, it's a struggle. Like I, everybody was really nice and let me use their tools and, and I got to use the pickle fork and it kind of looks like the head off a of sheep shear, you know, on a stick <laughs> and it okay. really moves. Some ice. You can almost move as much ice with that as you can a chainsaw. Wow. Oh, well. so, yeah, and Matt, we're just stuck here carving squash. I know. What the hell? And he's, he's, like he's going to Alaska. I, I, one, one thought I had is I would have to probably spend a couple grand just in uh, winter gear that I don't own. Okay, so I did find out though when I got there, the winter gear there is cheaper than it is anywhere we can buy here. I promise. Mm. But all I did when I I went up there ready to look like a kid off a Christmas store, look like you know all bundled yeah, up. Yeah, I can't put my arms down. Yeah, I wore I wore a pair of pants, Carhartt bibs, and two t-shirts and a hoodie, and then my gloves and a sock cap. That's what I wore even on the coldest day. If it's it's a weird cold. If you're if you're moving, you're not cold. I mean you're cold. Don't get me wrong, you're cold, but it's tolerable. But if you stop okay. moving, what the humidity just from your body, your shirt will freeze. It'll freeze solid. When you go to move your arms, you hear it crack. Oh, but, so as long as you're moving, it's tolerable. And that's what I wore all the time because we, we were outside all day. But if you if you screwed up and went inside without taking your outer layer off, it would all melt. And then you walk outside and everything go like the tin man freezing up, you know, rusting up. It was, oh, wow. It was that's pretty, wild. And then you couldn't use your phone because it was so cold, it would just drain the battery. And, uh, <laughs> so you had to put foot warmers. If you put warmers, we'd stick them on it, and then you could have about two minutes of camera taking time, you know. Otherwise, it would just zap it. Wow. wow. And I got to see the northern lights, but it has to be really cold and really clear night to see the northern lights. So I saw them once. They were out two or three more times. Everybody was like, you want to see them? I was like, I got my picture. I like my fingers. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> you know what was really almost cool. Almost as enjoyable oh, yeah. about hearing like how cold it was and like just putting you there is listen to the two guys on the warm side of the country go, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, how much clothing? <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I could yeah, take. And then we went and got in the hot springs, the China hot springs, which is like an hour away. So it's like, I mean, it's heated. It's just a natural hot spring, but they actually have to spray water in the air to keep the the pool cool enough to get in because one end's like 110 the end that most people stay in is like 105 but the ambient air around it you're outside like minus 30 so as soon as you come out of the water your beard and everything freezes and like i was saying earlier my back hair froze and i look like a silverback gorilla just cruising around <laughs> <laughs> so hey. i I, th I think it's in i think it's in fairbanks this year um is uh there's actually a midnight baseball game um in in alaska so it'll be midnight but it'll still be sunny out um oh, and I, yeah. I think yeah. it's in uh it says june 21st 2021 in fairbanks alaska um 
I'm not sure if that's that's the uh, one that's always there. I, I'm I have to do a little bit more research on it, but I've always wanted to go do that. Is watch midnight baseball with uh, with full sun in Alaska. That, that would that, yeah. It's just so many anomalies uh, there. It's, it's so fantastic. Yeah, when I, when I first got there, we had six hours of sunlight working time in the day, and then when I left, they had about seven and a half. So it was it was still in like the dark the dark part when I was there. Okay. Fast though, huh? Yeah, that's wild. Well, there you go. The uh, you, hey, so it's youthful and Davis. sulking, right? That was the thing. It's gotta be it's gotta be a young guy that's man. Could be a young girl. You know, yeah, well, yeah, young person. Yeah. Doesn't even have to be a person. True. Uh -huh. So you could be a robot, right? Yeah. 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 A robot. Stuff, so you, have young, have young, you have to be a young. You have to be a young robot to go do it. Yeah, it's a young robot <laughs> game. And then you could get butternut squash game, so we would be uh, it, it, all the ice carvers and everything. Of course, Tater and then Dave, we'd all meet in the lobby after every day, or not every day, but every other day, and we'd carve squash just to goof off. And then oh, really? So we'd, have, we'd have an audience at the hotel, people watching this car, and then there's like this little snow bank right outside the door. So when we left, there's just row after like three three rows, ten or twelve long. Uh, Carved squash just sitting up there freeze drying. <laughs> so we, even when we get to the hotel, we were goofing off. That's carving. Cool. Wow. So, okay. What is our thing again? It's a baby of some sort. <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> youth, sulking, sulking, a, a, a youth, youthful sulking okay. character. Sulking. Yeah. Oh dear God. <laughs> You guys think it's easy. I don't know what, you know, you don't know what you're going to carve right up until the last second. I know. I'm, I'm starting to start to question everything right now, Paul. <laughs> so, know. Dan, I was I was going through a lot of your work and I was, uh, I, I, I couldn't remember. Did, did you paint these or did, did, um, did someone else paint these? No, no, I painted them. You painted them? You were, yeah. Okay. I'm trying to. Uh, I I couldn't uh, remember who actually painted them and who didn't paint them. It's it's. Uh, I have to. I have to make it like a scoreboard to keep up with everybody's, uh, like everybody's stats. Yeah. Yes, yes, paints. No, doesn't paint. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm yeah, paint, sculpt, draw. Well, I dabble in a little of all of it. Not mastered any of it, but I dabble in all of it. Well, I um I was gonna ask you um in your bio it says author and I, I I've always been forgetting to ask you what what the author part of your uh, bio okay. is. So so that actually I've been in art my whole life. My mom's got a master's in art, and so I've always oh, wow. done more of the fine art side. And if you can see, I don't look like the guy you see in the art gallery. So when I showed up, it was always awkward. So that the author part started kind of this whole sculpting thing. I've always sculpted. My grandpa was a carver or a whittler. And, and so I've, I've sculpted with clay, but one day I was always saying, I'm going to be an electrician until something cooler came along. I'm like 20 <laughs> at that time. So I'm 38 now. <laughs> I'm still an electrician. But um, we were, I was on vacation and I'd made it to a foreman status and everybody was bugging me and I couldn't get enjoy the vacation. And I thought, you know what? I got to make something cooler happen. And so we're like in a squatchy looking area. It's all deep woods and I like Harry and the Hendersons and all that. Why not? write a kid's book about Bigfoot. That way I can do the illustrations. Didn't care really about writing it. I just wanted to do the illustrations. And then if I could see if I can get it published. And then I'm going to end up getting published. It, it, it's, it's kind of a halfway self-published. <laughs> but it's published. It's Author House is the, is the publisher. So I wrote a children's book. It's the first of a series about Bigfoot and the whole little community and how they interact. And it's, it's, I mean, it's, a, it's a cartoon children's book. Well, my buddies knew I was doing that. So, so that's where the author comes from. But my buddies knew I was doing that. And at the same time, I had a tree die and was falling on my fence. So I'm cutting it down outside. And they come by and they're giving me a little flack about Bigfoot. And like, why don't you carve a Bigfoot? And I was like, all right, you sorry dogs, I will. I've never used a chainsaw to carve nothing in my life. They come back the next day and I have a five foot tall foot in my yard. I used that whole trunk and I made a giant foot. So I said, that's a big foot. And then they used the land and they come up with <laughs> so that was my first time. A guy saw it said, can you carve an eagle? I was like, yeah, sure, but I need a smaller saw. He said, I got one. So I used it, and then he said, man, I really like that. Can I get another one? I said, yeah, can I get that saw? And it's like a $600 saw, and he's like, yeah, that's a deal. So it just escalated from there, and then like a year later, uh, I carved a piece and sold it to Blake Felton, and I thought, oh, there's my big win, you know. And it wasn't great, but it's cool. 
Cool. I'll sell him another one if you'll have it. <laughs> <laughs> so if you've got a, you've got a good yeah, we need, need a new saw. Just tell him, hey, you know, make it something else. New saw. <laughs> yeah, new saw. There you go. Awesome. But the uh, but that's so, so the author part kind of started this whole big carving journey because it was I was about Bigfoot. My buddies were just giving me trouble about it, and so I, all right, there's a Bigfoot, and it's a pop. <laughs> I think on my my other my other Instagram account, one of the first pictures is that foot. This is like a yeah. five foot tall stump. Like a yeah. Stump. Okay. Okay. That makes much more sense uh, for sure. Uh, that's funny because um, I, I think it's also a prerequisite to uh, have sarcasm to be an artist as well. Uh, the good yeah. artist, <laughs> super sarcasm, and uh, yeah, to carve a big foot is amazing. <laughs> yeah. So I haven't actually. I've, I've carved Harry from Harry and Henderson's out of a pumpkin. Uh, oh. place, but I, haven't, I haven't carved an actual Bigfoot yet. Just a giant foot. <laughs> Do you have any pictures of the Harry? Uh, I, did, I did one Harry. Yeah, it's on a. I'll have to dig it. It's on my Instagram, but it's a. Okay. I did it out of a big almond-shaped pumpkin. It was like a big pumpkin, but it, you can't tell how the size of it in the picture. But uh, I'm actually working on a, a bunch of aliens right now. Little aliens. There's a store called the Alien Invasion in Roswell, New Mexico. And they buy yeah. a little small from me and they sell them in the shop. So I'm about to haul aliens to Roswell next weekend. <laughs> right on. Nice. You're actually yeah. Never heard of them. yeah, since since they invaded that they'll be going back in. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. I I've actually been to Roswell. I went I went in nineteen ninety six. I think it was uh forty either forty eight or forty nine years since uh you know the the crash landing of the aliens. Uh but we actually went out there. I was actually doing like a little fanzine at the time. Um, and, oh, yeah. uh, and, and, uh, yeah, we actually went out there. I wanted to go for the 50th anniversary, but, uh, but, uh, but we went early and it was great. It was a lot of fun. And just to yeah, go I've see. Been the last, well, they canceled it last year, but I've been the previous two years. I got the grand marshal of the parade gave me a tag that got me in everything. Cause I had the best tinfoil hat and for two, three days in a row. I had a top hat, a 10 gallon hat. And then one of those Viking helmet hats, all made out of tinfoil, you know, and so, <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I went there to see, you know, see weird stuff, and I wound up being some of the weird stuff. And yes, I like it. <laughs> that. Was the same thing that we did. I, I actually had like a wrestling mask and like afro hair, and I went around interviewing people. I, I'll have to, I'll, I'll show it one time. I, I still have the fanzine of it, and uh, but it was fun, and that was the whole thing. It's a really small town, and uh, I remember yeah. at the time the mayor uh, of the city didn't really like the kind of uh, the kind of goofy type of aspect of aliens and everything but i i think the next mayor totally embraced it they're like hey if people want to come oh, here yes. and spend their money to come oh, um, heck yeah yeah embrace it why don't you yeah, yeah. totally it's a different, uh, different job there up there the ufo museum and some of the people there would laugh at the hat like i did because i just wanted it to have it some people told me it blocked my brain waves some people told me to amplify it so <laughs> don't pick a side while you're there because <laughs> it's, it's a lot of fun that whole thing's a lot of fun yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, whiskey is the only thing that really blocks my brain waves, but that's that's <laughs> self-induced. I was sitting there thinking, if they're, if they're amplifying my brain waves, they're doing something. Yeah. <laughs> There's not a lot in there. <laughs> <laughs> so my my buddy Kevin, who uh, does the beer baseball uh, blog with okay. me, um, uh, confirms the midnight baseball game in Fairbanks is on t uh, June 21st. So. Uh, get your tickets now. And also Tom Seaver, the late Tom Seaver, Hall of Famer for the Mets and Reds, uh, played played in 64 and 65. So, wow. Uh, that's probably way more information than anyone wanted on that. And there it is. Oh, no, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. You know how all the newborn babies kind of look like Elmer Fudd? If you start trying to do a, they do to me anyway. So if you, you start trying to make like a fat cheek baby face and then you start getting yeah. in, it starts looking like an evil animal fud kind of. So I've got to, <laughs> I've got to try to get the youth back. <laughs> Are you guys doing the carbon babies? Oh, yeah, that's yeah, like, like a new kid always looks like Elmer fud to me. You put a, you know, give them rest of the Don't they look like it? <laughs> got the, the, hardest anyway. thing, the hardest thing for me, Paul and, and, and Dan, is carving something that, is, that doesn't have wrinkles. I know that's the worst part. I, I just love carving wrinkle because it's just like okay, this 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 would go here, this would go here, and now I'm now I'm forced with like doing something where it's you know it's going to be more smooth and like a baby has proportionally big eyes and a small nose, but but doesn't have wrinkles. So anyway, so it's 
it's a challenge, but I hate this and love this wheel for that, I guess. Yeah. So I hear you guys are both doing, you, you're both going with babies, right? Well, I'm going, I'm, trying, I'm starting with babies right now. She could be, could be young, but I don't know. Right. Well, I'm just going to go with youth. So mine's going to be. Yeah, I'm no, like, you're still young in oh, your yeah. mid 40s. Right? Well, I'm 38. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No, I'm, I'm thinking more like 10 and under range, you know, youthful. Okay. I'm still okay. starting. Oh, How about, yeah, you, we could do it. We can 90 year old who's young at heart. There we go. That's, That's what I'm gonna do. 90, <laughs> 90 years young. <laughs> 90. Yeah. Yeah, I could be like George Burns, you know, make him like. You know. I think I'll just carve my brother. I was telling you, he's about nine in the head. Anyway. Got, got some reference right there for you. <laughs> yeah. He thinks he has a better beard. Quantity or quality, not quantity, you know. <laughs> quality, not quantity, man. Yeah. yeah. Cheeks, oh. big cheeks. Yes, thank you, Kevin. I, I I wanted to give a shout out to my Kevin, my friend Kevin. Uh, he hey, always yeah. gives me too much info, um, but uh, so I'm 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 very okay with it. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> so this is a sulking youthful person. Okay, I have to keep reminding myself because I swear to God, every single time I I forget. And then I even even after I make it, I'm like, what was I supposed to do again? <laughs> Did I ever tell you that my brother used my wife for the model for this monster card? <laughs> They're throwing stuff at me right now, and I'm pretty sure that was the model right there, my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Strange resemblance. <laughs> if we didn't see anything getting thrown, I'm sure we're going to see a shoe at any second. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That, 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 that model might be taking a dive off the table here in a minute. <laughs> yeah. oh. <laughs> Big elbow off the top. You know, the, the one thing that I noticed is I, I'm very jealous right now, Maddie, of your choice of Gord being the, the round Kaboka because it yeah. has that baby shape to it. Well, I, I'm lucky I got I got. I got a couple of big nuggets, you know, um, big old things like this. And when I when I saw the the thing come up, you know, youthful, I thought of the round face. The, the, what would be perfect, Paul? It would be like one of these, but real short and squatty. Yeah, would be, would be ideal. But if I can't have that, I'll go with this guy. You know, at this point, I don't have right, a. Right. There's no turning back now. Yeah, at this point, this is uh, it's going to be this. So. So what I've been doing uh, I, I, on the last couple is taking the top, not not so much focusing on the top, focusing on the you know the the form of the face itself, and and because I've been carving with the the smaller part up top, which is usually solid. Yeah. If I don't like how tall it is, I'll cut the whole damn thing off and, and uh, shape. You know, I I don't. I've been trying to go a little bit different with that is not focus on so much it's it's the lower shape i have to worry about and then i can kind of form the top later so i did that with like the the reptile yeah and um even with um zippy the last one there I, because it was solid i was able to like i mean i was using a knife to shape that thing i wasn't using any actual carving tools but mm. the, all the form came from big chunks taken off of it because you have some you don't yeah, really have to focus on that. The, you know, you're never going to have, you don't look at this and say, oh, good, this is a perfect shape. It's a friggin' peanut. Right? I know, I know. And what's, so what's in actuality, I kind of try to think like that now. You know, like what's below? How much I can know. I take away and shape everything at the end? I got to think that way a little bit more, too, because what I've, what I've been doing is trying to preserve the, the stem. And like, right. what, at all costs. And it's, it's no, for no reason. I mean, I, there's, like I was, oh, I was hack, hacking one up the other day, and that I'd already carved, um, and I realized I'm like, this is completely solid all the way through. Why am I doing this? But you know, and for for no other reason than to make it look like it has a, a stem. But everyone knows it's a, uh, you know, a squash. And when you look at the, some of these, I have another one here that that doesn't really have a a nice little, you know, almost pumpkin-like stem. It's just got this. 
And I'm realizing, like, why am I doing that? And, and if I took a look at this one, like you said, Paul, I could just focus on, on this shape, which is a nice kind of yeah. round shape, or even like something that's got like divots in it. Yeah, I, I don't know why I can't distance myself in my mind from like trying to make it stay intact. I don't know. Yeah, no, I agree. Do you also pick out all the butternut squashes that have ass cracks? I noticed that. I'm good at that. I'm good. Oh, at that. Do, you, do you see that sticking out and you're like, hey there, little fella? And you see Come here, butt crack. You're mine. Yeah. I, I, I am I am that weirdo who's walking around the uh the hard shell squash section at Safeway. I'm like, holy crap. And, I, and I'm I'm looking at him with an eye that nobody I mean, they're like, is this fresh? Is this not fresh? Am I gonna eat that and whatever? I'm, what, what, what terrible soup I, am I going to make out of that? I'm looking at it like, holy crap, that one's got a bend right there. Oh, what? It looks like looks like a butt crack. That's that's you know that's kind of how I address uh, my produce aisle. And I, I imagine that the people at the Safeway I go to are probably, oh shit, here comes that guy. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. Does, uh, does, does my squash have a big ass? <laughs> Is this crack <laughs> making you? Do my jeans make my squash's ass look big? <laughs> uh, John I've Davis got, says, I've been striking out with them. Oh, go ahead. John Davis Funny says that. you should uh, carve the Ute from my cousin Vinny. Oh, it was, it two, was Utes. two Utes, two Utes. <laughs> two <laughs> That's so funny. That means you could do a young Fred Gwynn. Who is the judge oh, in My Cousin Vinny? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Our young friend Gwen. He's, wasn't he Herman Munster or somebody? He was. He was. What was his name in Pet Cemetery? Oh, gosh. Oh, That's a look great at you. question. You better oh, know this. I don't. That, I'm nah. really, it's actually a question. <laughs> Mickey, you're usually faster than I can. I know. Well, I'll see. <laughs> Wait, no, hang I, was on. Waiting, oh. I was waiting for some education. I can't have all the obscure knowledge. Paul, you know what's gonna happen? Paul, he's gonna pull a book out from behind him. It's gonna be the Munster's trivia book or something like that. Right there, right? Yeah, right, right. right. It's within our reach. I actually, I, I actually did. probably did. Yeah. <laughs> hey, did you know in, in Liar Liar with Bill Bill uh, Jim Carrey, the movie Liar Liar? Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, sure. He's, he's hauled out from the burning building on the gurney. <laughs> You know, it, it, and Lar Lar, or, or those yeah. big wrecks. There's a fireman in the background, Fire Marshal Bill, going, you know, how, remember Jim Carrey's Fire Marshal Bill? Yeah, 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 yeah. Fire yeah. Marshal Bill Burns. Let me tell you something. He's his own movie as a previous character. That's it. Uh, yeah. what? I didn't know that. See, we're yeah. getting trivia. Nikki, you're, you're dropping the ball. Dan's picking it up. <laughs> hey, I, I did Fire Marshal Bill Burns. That was his full name. Oh, oh yeah. Hi, howdy, <laughs> folks. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta get the, you gotta get these neck things done. Hi, Hadi, folks. You gotta tuck the gums. Yeah, tuck the gums up. Yeah. I don't know if it, we may have touched on it before, but the awkward trivia. Didn't somebody bring up Alf at one time? On Alf, remember Alf, the show Alf? Oh, oh, I killed me. Yeah. <laughs> ah, ah, yeah. What oh, was his uh, full name? Do you know his Alf's full name? Oh, Alphonse Tomato? Shumway. Gordon Shumway. Gordon uh, Shumway, yeah. What was his own play? Oh, thank you very much. That was one of my favorite shows. I couldn't get enough of that. Oh, I used to draw that. Remember his favorite over planet? Over what was his planet? It was Melmac. Yeah. yeah. What was his favorite food? Cats. Cats. Ah, uh, but more specifically. Uh, Damn it. Uh, Bengal cat? I don't know. <laughs> no, it was it was Tabby Paw Pudding. Oh, Tabby Paw Pudding. Uh, <laughs> wow. That's awesome. That and a bucket of soup will get you a nickel or whatever you know what they say. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> my uh, so so for my for my beer baseball blog, I my friend Kevin is I, I always say he's my senior research analyst, and he has researched that the Fred Gwynn's character is Judd Crandall. Oh my Judd. god, Judd, that's right. You know, Kevin, you got you got to stick around. You got to be our like our our, uh, our Wikipedia anytime yes. we get lost. Yeah, that's great. That's what we do. That's what we do for baseball. So whenever there's something obscure that we don't know, Kevin's 
as is oh, holding wow. the trigger. Yeah, but have Kevin put it in the private chat so one of us can look really smart. Yeah, yes, really exactly. Smart. Yeah. Totally. Oh, it just came to me. I forgot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Favorite food is cats. Uh, just, just remember. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, Matt, uh, Loreth said that she thought you were a lefty. I'm not sure. What, were you batting uh, or you're uh, drawing or doing something lefty at one point? I've always camera been a righty backwards? to me. Yeah. No, I, I, I am a righty. Um, and um, and just barely even a righty. I, I, I can't even think. I can't even write with my left hand. I can't do anything with my left hand except for hold the pumpkin. It's funny because, like, I carve with only one hand. I think Paul, you do both things, both hands, right? I mean, what do we talk about? Carve, carve, carve. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, okay, come on. This is a PG show. I lean heavily towards my left hand, but I I will grab for forming for detail. It's got to be in such a tough spot that there's no other way to do it. But I, I will go to the right hand. And I thank my buddy Tom Moulton for that. Because when I first started carving pumpkins, that's the first thing he said is, learn how to carve with your opposite hand. Oh, forget it. Yeah, yeah. no, I mean, it, it, it takes, you know, whatever. A little here, a little there. Hey, I can't. I, so I'm, I'm to the point where if I had my left hand cut off, but I had a little hook, I could still do this. <laughs> A little stump. That's all I need. Like, I feel like it's not even because I swear to God, that's all it does. I, everything is with this hand. Like a little bit of trivia, Mickey. If you don't mind zooming in on me, I got some fun things to show. Oh yes, yes, yes. I do. But, I know this. Yes. So when I was a kid, I got my fingers crushed in a corn grinder. I was four years old. Whoa! This one, this middle one, was completely severed. And if you can kind of see, there's still stitches, and or you can't see stitches, but they're gone. But the stitch mark. On this finger, and, they, and they're all the same height. Like on a normal hand, it's like that. Oh yeah. So and, and and they're all crooked and they're all bent, and you can see all the stitch marks on the back of my fingers here. Mm -hmm. See all that? So yeah. So so my right hand I, is way overused. I've got scars all over the back of it from being bit by dogs and you know knuckles <laughs> from punching walls or whatever I did. But but like. Uh, if I were for this right hand, I would be like completely useless because I think this hand, my left hand, is only from my carving perspective, only for doing this. Or maybe I can hold it, hold it, drink of water or something. But that's about it. Jesus, man. Yeah. So I, so if if I lose if I lose this hand, I'm done. You know, I, I, Jesus, I, I didn't know your hand. Went, your poor hand. Your poor parents at the time. Oh, being the, oh man, fun story. Fun story. Yeah. So my brother, my brother and I were at, my parents were at an antique auction in 1974. So this was before, you know, cars and roads and anything. So, um, <laughs> and my parents loved uh, going to these antique things. We, have, you know, we, our house had like all these really cool antique things in it, um, you know, and, and they're at, at the auction, they're sitting there, and my brother and I are in the back, and there's this corn grinder that has a, a mechanical <laughs> turning thing on the outside, but it had a bunch of, like, if you can picture, like, gears going like this. And I'm just picturing my four-year-old brain, and wow. I'm, like, wanting to touch it. So my brother's cranking away at this thing, and I put my fingers in the, in the gears, not the grinder part, but the gears, and they just get pulled in, and then... And so, so I'm now I'm screaming. I'm four, and I'm screaming. And my parents come back, and they have to turn it backwards and crunch it out to get it out of the, oh, the, the gears. And all I remember, it's like one of my earliest memories, is um, my hand in a plastic bag with ice, and just it's all red. And my parents driving, you know, 100 miles an hour to the, to the hospital, and and so every picture from then on, I was an Indian guys and all these different. Uh, you know, Cub Scouts and stuff has I have this little mitten on, you know, as it was getting as it was healing from four to five. I think it was on for a long time. Wow. But, but look, I mean, the guy did a good job back then. I can still, I can still do everything with it. Yeah, but that's incredible. anyway, you were and you're you were a college swimmer as well, right? I was a college swimmer as well. So yeah, it's, I can still do this and pull water with me. So yeah, <laughs> Jesus, huh? Yeah, is that hilarious? I agree, jo Jody. Good Lord. <laughs> I know. Wait a minute. Matt, but, show. But Matt <laughs> relax. I, I, know, I know it was 74, Matt's but. Right hand, if anybody wants to donate. Donate <laughs> right hand. And so my, uh, my middle name 
my my nickname, not my middle name. My middle name has nothing to do with it. My nickname in high school was Knuckle because I have this giant like pe like, a bony structure that got built in here. And so I can't even like here's my wedding ring. I can't fit it on my finger because of the knuckles so big. Wow. Um, it doesn't even, you know, so I know other fingers are fine, but um, but my anyway, so now you guys learned a lot about me about my smashed up hand. Um, <laughs> well, I well, I didn't learn I I keep going back to four year old you. Were you six six at four four at like were you I, that big at four years old? I was like six one back then, but you know. <laughs> Well, you know what? It, it kind of ties in because if you're carving a sulking four-year-old, uh, now all I can imagine is this poor fruit's hand caught in one of those corn grinds. That's, that's why it's so sulking right now, yes. Okay. I, I didn't get it caught in the grinder, but I got the tip of that one cut off. It's got like a little lump missing. It cut oh. off and got held by a tube flap right there. My Ooh. brother and I were messing with the bicycle chain. And I said, don't touch it. Well, he says I said that. I don't know. I was four. And then, then Anyways, I grab the chain. He sends it around the sprocket and it clips the end of it off. I just remember him walking to the front porch, holding my finger, saying, look what Daniel did. <laughs> I was like, I didn't do it. <laughs> so that, anyways, wow. they just nipped the bone and sewed it back on. But that's the closest I got to losing the finger. All right. Mickey, how many, how many, uh, Mickey, how many are you missing? Yeah, come on. I'm good. I no, I I um, I'm I'm like the guy from uh, Jiro Dreams of Sushi, where I I protect my hands. Uh, have you ever seen that documentary? The the, oh. the guy in there, he used to wear gloves because he used to protect his hands so they wouldn't actually uh, so like see the light of day and stuff like that because he protected his hands at all times. Uh, so that that's wow. that's. Uh, but Paul, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it to you. Do you have any <laughs> young, debilitating, uh, uh, horrific? Uh, because I can say that I do, so I'm going to let you go next. I, I, honestly, I don't even want to participate in this. I think everybody watching is feeling <laughs> freaking crap. A lot of Thorazine and shit being taken. <laughs> so you had nothing as a kid where you just ha something happened? You broke yeah. Oh, yeah. As a kid. I think everybody did. But okay. Yeah, yeah no, I'm not playing. I'm not playing along. <laughs> okay. Fine. Fine. Yeah. I did fish I'm up so myself sorry. in the bunk bed. I Ooh, well, oh, yeah. I, I rolled off. I rolled off the bunk bed. I yeah. cut my thumb the other day. Does that count? I got a really good. Cut on my thumb. Yeah, I got my fingers with a grinder. I put a too big bit on it. Yeah. That's a tough one. I've seen a lot more horrific things happen than have happened to me. Oh, that's good. <laughs> we Which probably scared off I everybody who's watching right now. Yeah, right. <laughs> I think that's why not a lot of stuff happened to me though. Holy moly. So on a lighter note, how about those Red Sox? <laughs> <laughs> how, how about them? How about them? How about those guys? Um, I, I, I'll do mine really quickly. It was, um, I, yeah, I, went, I, I, was, I was at a I was at five or six, and I was at a car dealership, and I had these uh, dress shoes on, and it was a very uh, like slick floor, so I decided that I could uh, run and slide. Um, I did. I ran and slid and uh, promptly uh, fell um, and hit the bridge of my nose um, on a uh, uh, car rim or a tire oh, rim. Oh, no. Oh, God. Yep. Yeah. yep. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that'll, that'll definitely do it. Um, I, I love that, Matt, that, that was one of your first memories. <laughs> you... <laughs> no, no. So my, my very first memory, I was three. And my brother ran through the house. We were playing underdog. We lived in Connecticut. We ran through the house, and he was. What we do is we run, and you jump down three little steps and do a little wading pool, like uh, you know, like fill up pool, and um, off the porch. And he missed the handle of the door and put his wrist through the window part oh, of God. the screen door, and cut cut his this vein this, this one you couldn't cut <laughs> so my youngest memory was my dad holding my brother's wrist with all his might you know as the paramedics were coming to our house to, to because it was spraying everywhere i'm like so that was that was my first memory my second one was when my fingers got all smashed oh up. jesus <laughs> so you wonder about my parents uh, you know i i you know i mean come on Keep an eye on your kids, for God's sake. <laughs> uh, my friend Kevin, 
<laughs> wow. Wow. I cut my carotid artery. Wow. Oh, come on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everybody did that, though. But I'm, I mean, that I was, that was the, first few it was the 70s. You're supposed to do stuff like that. Yeah, come on. Who cares? Right. <laughs> and look, I'm, I'm older now, so it all worked out. Yeah. Right. Now, if, now, when you hurt yourself, it takes six months to heal. Back then, <laughs> a couple God. of weeks, you were like, oh, I can't even find it anymore. I had a good story, but the scar's gone. Yeah, they just put a little margarine on it, and you're good to go. Yeah, <laughs> band aid. <laughs> type of band aids. But no, it's funny because I I won't let my kids ride their bike without a helmet and stuff like that. And here I was, you know, you know, a complete. I, I disappear <laughs> on my bike on a on a Friday morning and not come back till dinner. You know, like, I'm not sure my yeah, parents knew home. where I went on a bike, let alone put, yeah, put a helmet on me to go there. Home. Yeah, that's what you have. <laughs> right. Uh, when did you get a bike? <laughs> <laughs> but you guys remember doing making like making jumps right you know on your you, you, oh you, yeah okay so every every kid did that and we would be making jumps and then every, somebody would get hurt and you'd have to ride home as fast as you could to get you know somebody you know band-aids yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah i mean it was kind of like that's what you did <laughs> we used to make our own go karts we would we would um borrow a carriage from the local supermarket the casters off the bottom okay and then you get a bunch of scrap wood from whoever's dad was a carpenter and they'd have all the scrap wood and you'd nail together that you put the casters on and we lived at the top of a hill and then you would just go and your, sne <laughs> your sneakers were the brakes so you had to be able to put those shoes down because it was a main street that cut across this way so you had to know to either turn into the last couple of cars and smash into them or you had the ability to stop Oh, the good old times, right? Oh, ah, yeah. the good old right. Now I'd be like, what are you guys crazy? Yeah, here. Let's yeah, put no, some bubble wrap on you real quick, kids. Come on. Yes. Christina, um now and now I mean, trust me, like I, I I if I could put bubble wrap around my son and uh I remember one time we went to uh a San Diego Padres game and we we actually had a really great uh they actually have these kind of they're kind of like luxury boxes, they're almost like an apartment. Uh, that you would go to and it had like a balcony where you could actually step so you, you could it was like almost like an apartment where you could actually um, you had like a you know a kitchen and and you could watch the game and uh, like in this little apartment thing but you could walk out on the ledge and watch the game if you wanted to it was oh yeah, yeah but I was just obsessed with my son I'm like please do not please my son is too young to be near that balcony please but yeah. if but now you know uh, Christina says the same thing. It's like they're putting themselves in mortal danger. Yeah, I mean it's like that. That's so. <laughs> um, but th we used to do that all the time, and I didn't even realize it. Like, like uh, oh my gosh, we used to do so many things that you could never do today that that would be um, considered uh, safe. Let's yeah. just say that. Okay. <laughs> I was the younger brother, so I was always the test pilot. Like when we oh, decided, yes, yes. Now let's all build a chopper. So we turned one of the girls' box upside down and beat the front. I'm like small, so we beat the front forks out straight as we could, put a rim on it, found a banana seat and some ape hangers, and the, the forks are crooked, you know. And so we took it all the way up the hill, right? And they said, all right, Daniel, you ready? I said, like, yeah, y'all be down there ready to catch me. You know, and I'm like six. You know? So I get on this thing, and I'm going, well, the forks are uneven, so it starts going, vroom, vroom. it's really unstable. And I'm sitting there, I'm going to ride it out. I'm going to ride it out. And then here comes a stop sign right there at the corner, just just north of my house. And I was like, what do I do? And so <laughs> I jump off the bike thinking I'm going to clear the stop sign, right? What happened was I wrapped around the stop sign and the bike straightened out. And I go, you know, as soon as I could get enough breath to go, <gasps> there's nobody around. Mr. King came outside and carried me to my house. And I found this kid in my yard. <laughs> <laughs> they took me and got my hip up straight and I still wouldn't squeal on who ran off on me, my brother. <laughs> yeah that was that was a weekly occurrence for me the, to get the wind yeah. knocked out of me <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> oh god yeah. oh, the, worst the, adult, the adult tells you to breathe you'll be okay you'll you, you'll be okay just take a breath and you're like i'm not gonna be okay. <laughs> it's too far from your heart to kill you kid walk it off come on yeah, man. Right. totally <laughs> Uh, oh my god I, I remember like matt and i uh, i mean we went to grade school together so 
uh, do you remember uh, being on the swing set and then just jumping on off at the highest point you could? Yeah. Like, <laughs> it, was like a, it was like a badge of courage if you could get. Um, <laughs> you see how high you were? Yeah. And then you'd land on your. Yeah. You. It was awful. It was always. You land on your feet and it would, it would be like like you'd be electrified. Yeah. You, you know, it's like stung all the way up your body. Yeah. <laughs> the first time you saw the kid let go backwards and then you thought, oh, I can try it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. there's no way I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> here's a fun one uh, christina says uh, when we were kids my brother jumped off the roof and uh, i think shattered both of his ankles oh, good Jesus. times oh, Jesus. still rode his bike home um yeah it was acceptable <laughs> in the 80s there's a uh, calvin harris song called acceptable in the 80s that i listen to all the time <laughs> that is it it's uh yeah no one cared <laughs> well, Mickey, I, I remember I was in high school and I was not allowed to ride um, ATCs, you know, the three wheelers, because they're just big balloon death machines, you know. Right. Yeah. And so, so my friend Chuck Carmichael decided, hey, we're going to go ride my ATCs out in the desert, and I was like, I'm in. I just, I, I was in love with them. So I ride, I ride this one up a big steep hill, and I get to the top, and it rolls on top of me, and I ride it on top of me all the way back down the hill on my back and so I get up I get up and I still to this day have a, a nice nasty scar it's about the size of like uh, I don't know pancake yeah. but it's like scratches every direction and and it was bleeding down into my shorts and everything because it was just road rash right and I remember for the longest time I, I never number one never told my parents about it or anything because then I would never be able to ride them again it was like sure Sure. I was like, okay, I made that mistake. I gotta hide this now. And I remember like, like reaching back, and I'd be in the shower, I'd reach back, and I'd like pick rocks out of the back of my yeah. my skin. Oh. Like a week later, I was anyway. Yeah. Smart. I was a really smart kid. Believe me. Yeah, I, I I have at least two stories that I probably I do not want to say publicly uh, between you <laughs> oh. and I, Matt. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I just appreciate that. We'll keep those for the. Uh, we'll keep those for the. Uh, only fans like, yeah 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 we'll, get, we'll have a we'll have an after hours patreon something um uh, yeah um uh, definitely uh christina is loving what paul is doing so let me uh let me solo in on paul real quickly you're uh getting oh, yeah, there very quickly oh well, young it's not that young is easy but they don't have a lot of wrinkles like matt said so what they do have is super duper defined like baby's faces are like little cartoons yeah. Well, young faces, you don't get all the extracurriculars going on. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to focus on this area, right? Right. That's all when it's pursed, right? Is that the word? Pursed? Yeah. Yeah. Pursed so I'm, yeah. yeah I'm just trying to purse this. And it's kind of got that little, you know, as, as they do, they have that kind of a lean anyway. Yep. So I'm just working on that. Thank you, Christina. I appreciate yeah. that very much. Yeah. I, it's funny because um, I remember one time because like people's assumption is that like a baby or uh, somebody really young doesn't have bags around their eyes. Right? They have more. It's all fatty. It's exactly. Like exactly. They do. It's it's just the way that it's presented. I mean, the rest of the you know skin is very you know real flat and stuff like that. But you're absolutely right. Yeah. There is. Yeah. There's. It's very defined. You know what I mean? It's almost like um, I was saying baby's wrist. It looks like it's not attached to its forearm. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's plugged on with a ring because of all the fat. They got nice creases. Yeah. Look at that. Oh, oh there we go. Oh, there. see, he's got the lip perfect. All yeah, right. Yeah, you got the pout right in the corner. That yeah. Crazy. Trying to find the right light for that guy. So, I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah, the whole part is not cutting in too deep because you want it smooth. And right. then I'm going to try to right. not make it into an old man or Elmer <laughs> Foot. <laughs> That is awesome. Yes. Yeah, I like that. You get him rounded over nice, too. Well, he is the Halloween Wars champ. I mean, the guy's got super yeah, hello. We, we, we have the champ on with his people. No big deal. Yes. A, a cut above. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not, not, that, not that we can, not that this show can generate an actual, you know, uh, get, get a champion on with us, but, you know, here he is right here, people. Yeah. yeah. Hey, that's the kind of content we deliver. What the you hell? Is Paul, yeah. Paul, you're in the <laughs> I apologize. What have you done for me lately, Paul? No shit. Really. <laughs> it's like 100 years ago now, huh? <laughs> no, when you say 2019, that does sound a long time ago, right? It's, yeah, right. My mm -hmm. kids are like, wow, you're old. 
<laughs> just tell them you're older than Google, and they'll be like, "Wow, wow!" Can you imagine? Yeah. Was Jesus around when Google started? <laughs> I called my mom Fossil. I swear, I thought she parked a dinosaur when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> there was no such thing as cell phones. I tell my kids, I'm like, "Yeah, see this picture of me with hair? Yeah, there was no cell phones then either. We didn't even right. have pictures." Oh, well, I'm just looking through. I turned the light off. I'm just trying to see. Yeah, that makes the shadows better. <laughs> there you go. I'm there talking you go. window and overhead lights. <laughs> my my son used to say to me whenever I just bring up somebody who would be I don't know. It, it could be anybody. It could be um, I don't know somebody who's not even old, maybe like 40 years old, and he would always inevitably ask me, um, "Are they dead?" Like just yeah. like a, a right, nature. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. no, 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 not everybody. Not everybody I bring up is dead. <laughs> my, my youngest son. My mom was giving my youngest son a history lesson. Right, it's something on TV, and she was at his house, or he was at her house, and he's a little guy at the time. He's sixteen now. But my mom has like chrome hair, or almost white. You know, <laughs> I call it chrome. You know, it's cooler. But uh, she's talking about Benjamin Franklin, and she's talking about what he did. And all this stuff. And I guess he was so on point with it. He said, Did you know him? She goes, No, he was older than me. He went to another school. <laughs> yeah. 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 But he thought he thought she knew him. Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> um, McFrazzlestash, uh, have you seen the Action Park documentary? Oh, oh from uh that was in New Jersey or something, right? Yep. I think I did see that. Where everyone gets hurt on every ride. <laughs> yeah. There's a if you, if you're a, uh, do you guys watch Mr. Show? It was probably like 20 years ago. It was like HBO. It was Bob Odenkirk and David Cross. Um, they did a similar kind of uh, action park type of a skit, and it was this roller coaster <laughs> that everybody would die on. Uh, but then you know, uh, but. Uh, whoever didn't die would get off of it and tell this horrific story. And then um, they're just like, well, what are you going to do now? And then they're like, well, we're going to go again, of course. Okay, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Run it back. Um, but yeah, that, that thing, I think it was based on, on that story. It's like that. Oh, my God. It looks it looks horrific. And I can't believe that they let it go as long as they did. Remember Super Dave? Speaking of old. Super oh, Dave Osborne, oh, yes. Super Dave Osborne. Now, now, Paul, what what was uh, Super Dave? Uh, what was that from? It was actually from a show. Ah, I don't know. Wasn't it on like Showtime or Cinemax or something? It was. Yes, it was on. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah one of those, I believe. Uh, I don't remember the name of the show, but he was he was supposed to be like the evil Knievel guy. I remember. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yes. Maybe it was dope. on a show called Bizarre, and it was uh, by a guy named John Biner. Um, but yeah, right. there's, like, there's the Mickey we remember. Yes. Mickey's back, everybody. <laughs> Mickey's back. Uh, and by the way, they, they he's back that in, uh, in, in, yeah, with these kind of cameras. Uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> little, little trivia. Yes, yes, that was a, that was a really uh, actually it wasn't a great show, but that was a really great uh, thing that came from it. You remember Fridays that show? <clears throat> Fridays no. was another kind of like uh, it was like a kind of a rival to Saturday Night Live. Uh, it, Larry yeah, David was, was on it. Funny, Andy Kaufman, funny. yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, there's a really awesome uh, Devo performance during that. They they were literally trying to. It was ABC's version of uh, Saturday, Saturday, Saturday Night, Night Live. Yeah. So Dan, I got a question for you. Yeah, you're, you're in Oklahoma, right? Yeah. Okay, now it, what's the weather right now in Oklahoma? I mean, are you guys seeing spring start up, or is it still? Oh no, cold? spring starting up. We're all starting to look for morel mushrooms. I mean, it just we just got there with a couple storms, so it's warm enough that the morels will be popping up this week or next week. So everybody's kind of in a rush to go to their hunting spot because some of our hunting spots overlap, so you want to be the first one to get them. You know? Oh so wow! It's like, it's like, it's like so what's with morel? Sunny. Morel well, mushrooms. Yeah, I mean, I know what they are, but what, what's with them? I mean, do people like you know, because they grow? You, you get to you go out and pick pick all the ones you want. I mean, you sell them. Or yeah, I mean, if you have a, if you have access to the land and people don't care that you get them, most people's like, oh, just come get them, give me a few. I mean, they just taste awesome, and so it's just like a big. Yeah. Some like when deer season opens, everybody rushes in to go get it, you know. But morel season, everybody's just all. Wow, I didn't even know that. That's cool. 
I'd be afraid to eat mushrooms out of the ground. Okay, well, these are different. They're unmistakable. Have you seen them around in the wild? They're like a big honeycomb looking thing. You've, they're, they don't look like any other mushroom. There's no mistake. Oh, okay. okay. The, whole, the whole top looks like a honeycomb that, without the honey. In it, but So there's no... It's oh, definitely okay. what it is. Don't get me wrong. Mushrooms are a good thing, just in, in a general sense. No, I don't, I don't, that's the only one I'll pick and try to eat is that one. Because the rest <laughs> of them all look like Smurf House to me. But that one, you can tell. <laughs> They do foster creativity at times, from what I hear. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> yes. So I've yeah. heard. So I've heard. So I've read. Now, I have some friends that may know about those. <laughs> <laughs> I got cows. You got a guy? Mm -hmm. Got a guy? Got cows? I know. There's somebody always knows a guy. This cousin knows a guy. Yeah. Someone guy. Some, everyone knows a guy, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, we have a vote for SCTV over SNL. Oh, yeah! Really? So CTV yeah. is great. Bob and Doug and, and yeah. uh, John Candy. John Andy Candy. Levy. Yeah. What about in Living Color? Living that Color was, was fantastic. That well, was we were just talking about it earlier with the Fire yeah, Marshal. Right. Bill. Fire Marshal. Fire Marshal Bill, Homie the Clown. Yeah. I mean, homie <laughs> don't play that. What was the Jamaican skit? He's like, I got four jobs, man. Hey man. <laughs> hey man, that's what it was. Hey man. <laughs> oh, that was such a great skit. Speaking of which, that's what I always say to my friend Kevin. He has he has like 16 jobs, and I always say, Hi, hey man. <laughs> hey man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was that was um uh, a great show. Uh David Allen Greer is one of my David Allen Greer was so good on He's that hilarious. Show. Martin Lawrence. Martin Lawrence was on there, right? No, he was not. No, he actually, was on Chris Rock. Chris Rock was actually on at the end. But not Martin Wayne Lawrence. Uh, Tommy <laughs> Davidson. You remember the show uh, Martin? Yes. Yeah, yeah that's, that's what I was thinking of. Yeah. I can't think of Martin Lawrence without seeing Shanene. <laughs> Shanene. <laughs> <Hey. laughs> yeah. So I, I used to work in Sherman Oaks, California, and there's a uh, oh. car wash. And uh, and it, it was the car wash where, where Martin Lawrence <laughs> I'm not sure he might have been on something, um, but he uh, he I don't know if he was arrested or whatever, but he he definitely had a, a domestic incident where he was running through the streets um, and had to be subdued. <laughs> yeah, I'll have to look that up. Good time. Maybe he went, maybe he went mushroom picking. He exactly. could have very easily. From Morales, grab, grab the wrong one. Very easily. Right. And and that that um, that car wash was right next to there was a hot dog stand that was owned by Ozamot. Do you know who that is? I know Ozzy. Different. Yes, Ozma, uh, who is um, if you've ever watched oh, Borat, he was the oh. remember that scene um, oh. where they're running through the hotel and they're yeah, running, that's the big guy. The big guy. He actually oh, owned that God. hot dog stand right there. <laughs> 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 what a treat to see that guy naked. <laughs> treat is the word. There we go. Something's different. Hey, Mickey. Uh, there you go. I was, I was, I was, um, oh, here we go. Let's see, Dan. I'm using light. I can't. Hold on. It's backwards to me. I'm trying to find the right light to show you because, oh, look, I'm backwards. Yeah, but I'm at the, I'm I love those the jowls. Yeah, I'm trying to tuck those in, but I'm running into old man. See? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a slippery I'm trying to get the little, cheek, the little cheek, you know, like little kids have that little yeah. fat spot right there. The meat. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, what I find is you got to leave the room, but just round it off. Don't, don't cut into it. You know, just round it off, but leave the room there, right? Yeah. They leave all the extra meat on it. Yeah. I was thinking though, what you said earlier, Paul, was cutting the top off if you have to. I may have to to make it look like a, a kid. Yeah, if you round off the top, I think that helps sell it a little bit. I'll probably run into the same problems. Because it is tough not to want to overdo wrinkles. I know. I just want to. I just want to make some nice big wrinkles on this guy, but. Yep. Yeah, well, that's this the challenge of the wheel, right? Of me, you know? So he, yep. here's a question. 
so lately we've been doing uh, you guys have been doing um you know the wheel and then we kind of you know do an hour and a half and then um and then we come back and then i see you guys posted on on our instagram you know the final results how much time are you putting in after the fact on these yep. are you guys obsessing about that or do you guys spend an hour 10 hours i can handle that one because i thought of it when i finished the last one which is it's a little later for me here being like now it's 10 past eight so when we finish and wrap up i will stop so i'm honestly probably putting in what would you say 45 minutes of actual carving time on this because the rest of the time is doing what i'm doing right now right we're having a good time there's no real rush um so i'll put it on ice usually for a day or two because you know friday family we got things going on but i'll usually get to it over the weekend and i'll usually dedicate like another hour and a half to two hours on it, on average that's usually enough time because you got your forms rough and you can sleep on it so if you don't like the direction it's going you already can kind of map out what you need to do. So I'd say I have another two hours on it. Okay. Yeah, it's about, about I'd say two hours is, is about a good average for me of what I'll have left on it. Um, and it depends on the one. I mean, the, the last one with the, the, uh, the pinhead, for me, after I saw it from Paul, I'm like, God, God, I probably spent more time than I should have. And I, and I dug in too far. I, I, I started getting a little bit too obsessed and it was it was only because we were doing the same character, but I'd say typically it's it's two hours. I'll, I'll put two more hours in on it, minimally. Yeah, that's yeah. you got to do. Just it just how far we get. I'm using, I mean, this is a kid, so you can overwork it to death, or youth, so you can overwork it to death, and then it's going to be an old man. So yeah, I don't yeah. Really think that I'll have more than forty five minutes after the show on this. Otherwise, yeah, if I yeah. do, you'll know because it'll look like an old guy. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And. Here, here's a feature that um, is kind of underrated, dimples. So uh, um, if I can solo in, on, I was going to say, if I can solo in myself. Thank you. Thank you. I've had those since, uh, yeah, the early 70s. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, the rest so of surgery. If, you, if you'd like me to model, I, <laughs> I could do that for you. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's all surgery, don't, don't, don't lie to us. Oh, damn genetics. Giving me dimples. <laughs> <laughs> My wife has dimples. Some yeah. kid told her that when, she, when she's a little kid and the doctor goes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. I, I always wanted one into my chin. That always seemed masculine. Well, yeah, that's yeah. A, the yeah. whole that's chin thing. It's like a superhero chin, right? That's like a, what was that? The actor. Kent? Kirk Douglas. Yeah. Any anybody very masculine would have, would have a dimpled chin. Tom Brady. Oh, he's dreamy. You need DePaul, you got you don't like him anymore. Polly Shore? No, I Polly Shore. Polly Shore, yes. The totally weasel. Polly. Got a cheese the weasel. <laughs> hey, buddy. hey I buddy. I told you that I saw uh Polly Shore open for Sam Kinnison. I'm gonna put that over again. That's 1989. Right. That's right. You did. Yes, yes. Don't <laughs> <laughs> don't hate me. me. Don't hate me. Good Lord. How was it? Yeah. Just as funny um, as we all think. Uh, yeah, it was okay. It's okay. The weed. I, okay. Thought, I thought it was good at the time, but it probably wasn't. <laughs> 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 I was like, oh my gosh. It's, I'm so That's adult. Really I'm going to a comedy yeah. show. Yeah, right, out, right after spring break. You know, here he is. Spring break. I used to lift up my shirt all the time. Nice. That we got all those beads in the background. <laughs> yes, yes. I won them all. I earned those, by the I way. Earned I earned them. them. Earned them. <laughs> uh oh, I got heat. I got heat. Well, I was I was trying to get. Uh, actually, it wasn't that I was asked. I was saying Tom Brady was dreaming. Yeah, I tried yeah. to get try to get Paul to say it. Way to stumble on that one, Mickey. Now everybody. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an Arizona Cardinals fan. Like nobody's dreamy on that team. Said no one ever, except for Larry Fitzgerald. Yeah, he is. He, he's he's, he's the only guy who cared <laughs> to get us close to a championship. That guy's got to be a year away from retirement too, right? He's been a year away from retirement for like the last ten years. <laughs> he's but still, he's still, he's still, he's still, he's still might come back. 
Yeah, if there's if there's a if there's a, a a single athlete in the state of Arizona that just is pure love, it's it's, it's him. Yeah. Yeah, he's really loved that guy. You, you know, you know who's probably loved just as much, if not more, and is no longer around is Pat Tillman. This is oh, good wow. yeah. I mean, well, way to bring the show down, Mickey. Sorry, I didn't mean it. Jesus, Matt's crushing his hand. We're talking about war heroes. What the <laughs> hell is going on? Sorry, everybody. You, you talk about somebody who's dreamy, Pat Tillman, in his day. Ooh, he was. Yes, that's right. He had the uh, classic, classic uh, features. All right, so let's uh, get, jump off that and uh, <laughs> uh, war hero everything. Okay, so um, actually, uh, so we, we're we're at um, an hour and seventeen minutes. This this has flown by. Um, uh, Dan, do you still have anything left in that bottle? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm done with the label. Oh, uh, finish it. Finish it. Yeah, finish it. Yeah, well, chug, you chug, can't chug. 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 <laughs> there we go. You Man up in Mount Park. I even checked it because I thought that can't be a full fit. So I took a fifth of something else and filled it with water and poured it in there. Yeah. Sure enough, it fits. So oh, yeah, that's legit. It just <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that looks that looks Tremendous. Oh, um, well, I want I, I, you know, we haven't really got to go through, uh, you know, yeah, Dan's... let's see Dan's stuff before we get. Yeah. Very nice. That's what I love that much. I mean, there's there's so many in here that that um that I put together. I I don't remember having a whole bunch. Uh, I think when we first started doing this, I I had just a couple examples. I mean, but there, uh, these are all so good. So many expressions. <laughs> Yeah, my little devil. Little devil. Nice. Oh, I like that it's one. Kind of yeah, I was just playing with the, that. Was before I went to Halloween Wars, and I was trying to, I was trying to play with texture, and that was like my experiment with gauze. Okay, that looks really cool. And then that was my first. Yeah. Okay. So that's one of our. That's actually the piece off the first episode of Halloween Wars. Yeah. Okay. There. The driver's pumpkin, the babies on the back. I don't know if you can see them, the tater babies. They're they're tater and then the back, the passenger, his full body's pumpkin. The rest is cake. Um all the cactus and scorpions and all that stuff, that's sugar. Uh the wow. exhaust on the hood is sugar. The the what's what's cool is I made the, the those are sugar skulls on the hood, but I sculpted that and made a mold for Steve to use for that right there on the side. So Okay. How'd you make That's the mold? A, or a chocolate skull, not a sugar. How'd you make I the mold? I use clay, and then they have that. There's a two-part putty that you can buy. There's two a two-part putty you can buy uh, at Hobby Lobby. It's yellow. Um, I can't remember the name right offhand, but it's 50-50 mix. You just knead it together, and it's like bubble gum. You just wrap it around it. I did a two-piece mold, or I did. I know I did a I did a sock mold. Huh. Yeah. Very nice. Cool as hell. Yeah. So it's it's really pliable and it's it's but it's uh I can't remember the name of it but it's Did we and then it thing? dries and it, it cures it doesn't dry it cures chemical reaction it does oh, it in about ten minutes and then you're ready to pull it out it's, it's oh. really neat yeah I, I love that one that was a great one there yeah I always love these where you uh, put the hands in them or to push the face together it's really really inventive. I mean, uh, this is the opposite of what you're doing right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I'm jealous because Dan gets all these really, Dan gets all these really good um, fresh pumpkins. It seems like pretty easily. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, damn it, I got, I got to get them shipped in or drive hours to get them. He just throws them. And this one's uh, made out of wood oh, yeah. and right. stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, so that that's a, that's actually made out of cedar because I have a lot of cedar available here, and then we painted it. But it's a chainsaw carving. That's amazing, oh. amazing. Paul, when are you gonna do chainsaws? Uh, when you guys want me to have a horrible story about what happened to my hands. <laughs> we don't have one yet. <laughs> yeah, well, you could have one. Do one. <laughs> if you do uh, one, you'll be hooked. I promise. It's on my list of things to do. I just I, I want to do it too. Yeah. 
it seems like something you could do like oh, later in life. The, you know, <laughs> yeah, like in the next one. But I'll tell you, it took me a long time to figure out. You, you wind up nailing stuff together and all that. A jaw horse. It looks like a saw horse, but it's metal and it's got jaws on it that bites to it and holds. So a jaw okay. horse is important for the small pieces because that's you know yeah. like that's okay. all. You hold it in place and then you don't have to worry about it falling. So yeah, a jaw horse. So I, I think I think this is this is something you created the last time you were on. If, if I saw the caption, yeah, correctly. that was that was on the show. I, I wasn't paying attention to how, you know, I've gotten up. I've got my eyes off, obviously. But it's a big one. It's not going to look right, right? Yeah, that's back when we we were really finishing them quick too. Like yeah, we, you were. We were yeah. kind of knocking them you, out. Really, you quick. were almost done with that before the show was over. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that was right after. That's that what you, you couldn't talk about. Step back and look at it. That you know, you wish you had. That's what my mom always tells me. Step back and look, and then you'll see something you screwed up on. Just, just man. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I try to minimize that these days because I'll end up throwing the thing away. Okay, so, so that's too vodka. That was on May. That was on May fourth. So that was uh, the tagline was May the fourth be with you. So I course. did cherry out of the potato. So I wanted I wanted to show this one because I wanted uh, cool. this inspired me to do a a uh, a potato, and uh, yeah, it didn't turn out this good. <laughs> it might turn out. <laughs> I was really um, I was really impressed about how you actually kind of um, and may and maybe my uh, potato was actually too soft. I mean this this might have been a little bit harder, but um, you got no, a lot of good you got a lot of good detail out of this one. I can see I make my own tools so they're a little bit sharper, but it's uh than what you'll get like at the Hobby Lobby or something. But mm -hmm. it's uh, I don't know, they're soft. It's a different kind of material. It's uh but it's fun. It's not like butternut or nothing, but no. I'm sure that everybody's carved a, a tater, but it's uh less is more on that thing because they're kind of grainy, you know. That's I'm right. Sure yeah. That. yeah. That's what I that's what I found out the hard way. I was like, how did he get so much detail in this? I mean it's amazing. So but yeah, it's, it's a, a little bit less. less is more. More than, where is yeah. the sun so I can get the shadow where I need it kind of thing? Yes, totally. Right. Lighting, lighting always helps. Always. Yes. Now, Dan, what did you use? What do you use for the blades on your tools? Huh. I go to a junkyard, and on every windshield, well, on most of the older the windshield, windshield wipers, there's two stainless steel pieces of flat metal on yep. each wiper blade. You pull that yep. off, heat it and bend it, and then job it in a piece of wood, and then kind of buff it with a grinder. But it's a it's a stainless steel piece that like this one out here. Oh, where's the camera at on the It's a double ended like flat tool, and it's a, I serrate one side and leave one side uh, not serrated. So I, I I usually double end them so I have a, a small and a, a large. But that's all it is. It's just a. But that that's the piece of metal that comes on a. Uh, like you can see on there, there's on on the the newer ones don't have it, but junkyards don't care if you take their old windshield wiper most of them like just go ahead and uh, but that's the piece of metal out of a windshield wiper wow. yeah, huh? and you said you heat it but you can't just bend it and poke it in there most of the time you bend it and it'll break so you heat it with like a butane torch or maybe even a lighter and then you yep. bend it and it'll, it'll hold but yeah very cool when i didn't come up with that uh dean arnold showed me that and it was uh ray villafane who showed him ah it was actually one of ray villafane's pieces that he'd made for dean and Dean's, I was like, man, I really want to make my own. And like, I don't sell them, but I, I make them because I can't find the shapes I want. And so it was Dean Arnold on the show who turned me on to that strip of metal. Oh, cool. cool. Yeah. So, I mean, just some next level stuff here from uh, the 2020 champ cool. from Halloween Wars. Just super, super cool stuff. And we saw this at the beginning of the show, which was uh, the ice sculptures and you, you do wood and everything. You're, you're, you're truly a, a Renaissance man, uh, Daniel. Uh, yeah. I love that. That dinosaur came out great. Yeah. It's, uh, I was, so cool. okay. So the funny part is I broke both arms carbon. And so I had to put them back on. So the left arm, which would be his right is attached with water. I, I missed it and stuck it on there. Well, I was out of water, but I was drinking a bang energy drink at the time. And I poured it out, and it was clear. So his left arm is attached with the Bang Energy drink. I stuck it up there and poured it on the pros. <laughs> good enough. I'm walking away. <laughs> that is awesome, awesome. So, so Dan, like, 
well, I have your Instagram here, but is there anywhere else where we can see uh, some of your work or um, do you sell anything? Uh, no, I, I do sell stuff. I, I don't have a active website as of now, but I do have Facebook, which is Daniel Miller Creations, the same as Instagram. And so they can message me off either. And but yeah, so I'm all the time doing new projects and coming up with crazy stuff. Very cool. Very cool. So let's uh, let's go around the room and uh, see uh, where everybody's at. Paul, I'm going to go. I'm going to start with you. Of course you are. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about yeah. in the same spot I was. I'm uh, yeah. still roughing out for him. I, I got looking good, though. Yeah, I got I lost a little bit of the sulk so far, but I'll, I'm going to gain it back. I'll, I'll curse this whole thing. Out. What the Whoa. hell is that? <laughs> that wasn't me. Is someone wrapping up some uh, big packages? I heard like the tape. Is there a body going in a trunk right now? <laughs> no, it was, it was, it was, I was moving the screen. Oh, look oh, right. I'll go to you, I'll go to you, Dan. I was just moving the screen. <laughs> no, I was trying to get it while I could get some light on it, you know, so I got, I was rigging there stuff up so I can get it better. Uh, not that I'm good. not prepared, Whoa. but it's going to be. That's looking really good. That's looking that really, amazing. I, I like it. That nose is killer. Yeah, it is. No, I'm trying to. I'm trying to get it. I'm trying to make everything subtle. I'd really like to rip into it, but it's going to look like an old man. I know. See, it's youthful, though, Dan. You got to get the hard part. I've had, I've had to pull back a lot. Does mom help? It's all about smooth. Yeah. I, I, I just love when it, when you guys do the underbite or overbite. I think it's just so. Well, awesome. I was hoping to get him all like mad like a yeah. little kid, but it's looking like an underbite. Yeah, like a bulldog. <laughs> right. <laughs> all right, Matt, where are you at? I'm right here. Oh, okay. Hi. You <laughs> made still Griffin. Yeah, I'm, I'm still I'm still messing with kind of forms, but uh, trying to get him pouty. Why is this thing? Come on, people. There we go. Is that better? Yeah, we can see it. Okay. Okay. Um, so I, I think I'm going to go a lot deeper in. This thing's like a rock, thankfully. That's awesome. So I want to get this lower lip a little bit more pouty. So I'll probably cut down his upper lip and his nose a little bit more to. Or it could be a sheep. God only knows. It's a child. But uh, yeah, starting to come along. And the fun thing about this is it's got this, you know, the layers like like the good some of the good pumpkins we get that have like uh, green in veins. Yeah, so right now it's got that green nose and some green stripes and stuff like that that are fun. Just kind of yeah, those are good. I like those. Yeah, coming up great. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave you with this one. Um, who's saying solid? Solid, solid as a rock. That's what this love is. Um, Black Sabbath. Black Sabbath is a very good guess, but not. Is it. this gonna be a one-hit wonder though that nobody would have known? No, yeah. Ashford and Simpson had a couple of, of songs. Asher, 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 Asher and Simpson. Yes, that's Asher. what I was gonna say. You didn't give me time to guess. <laughs> I, to, I had it. I was waiting for it, and I gave it to you. You would have been waiting a long time. (laughs) My eyes are starting down on my phone. Mickey, why don't you ask the folks who are watching if anybody else is carving or... Yeah, I I didn't see anybody uh, carving with us. Usually, uh, McFrazzle Stash is usually doing something. Christina's Uh, usually in on it as well. Christina as well. Well, I mean, even if they don't... I'd love to see, because sometimes I find that people, like, two, two, three days later, like, okay, yeah, I did one. And, And they... They don't want right. to talk about it while we're on, but it seems like somebody's always carving something. So yeah, there we go. It is. There you go. Nice. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. All right. All right. So we can't wait. I can't wait to see their youthful. Uh, yes. Paddle. Sulking, or, youthful or, character. Youthful. Sulking, right? Sulking, pouting, something. Did you did, now? Because that was the most random thing I've ever heard you say, Mickey, and nobody's addressing it. But why, why did you just bring up solid as a rock? Because like, um, solid like because Matt Matt said he, it was real. It was really solid. His uh, oh, his core right, was very right, solid. Because right, right. now was I'm solid as sulking. a rock. Sulking as a rock, like an asshole screwed up in my brain. <laughs> I can't, I can't worm. That's what our love is. That's what this carve is. <laughs> The feeling is yeah. so hot, 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 hot. All right, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, we end another Carvers and Creators. This is where you no. can find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and no, Twitch. It's not over. Let's look at. Let's look at Dan. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so cute. 
So good. So uh, he needs a yes. beard. I think he needs a beard like you, Dan. Oh, right. Yeah, that's a young beard. That's be a young right, beard. Like chrome. A beard. chrome in there. There you go. That's like uh, those old timey pictures where you have like the little kid and he has like a big handlebar mustache or a beard or something like that. Like, nice. From yes, the yes, yes. Yes. The bag from the bank with the money in it. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. Exactly. We gotta add that to the wheel next time, there, Paul. There you go. Oh, what, like old timey. Old timey. Old timey. Yeah, we'll, we'll add old timey. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> that that could be really broad, but you know, hey, whatever, right? That'd be fun. Gotta be a dude? No. <laughs> That's like a multiple day carve, though. That's like because you got to do like a hat. And oh yeah. Stuff. That that's a <laughs> accessories. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a kiss the wife and kids goodbye for the weekend while i'm downstairs trying to piece together this thing. well dan thank you so much for joining us again uh we look forward to having you back you're always uh one of our favorites so th thank you so much uh for joining yeah, uh, thank you for having me. yeah yeah uh paul did you have anything that you wanted to plug uh no the usual we're gonna be All here right. every thursday we appreciate everybody for coming by and hanging with us we have a good time we hope you do too and we'll be back again next week uh, unless something changes with Miss Terry Hardware right. coming back. Oh, right on. So that's that's pretty great. awesome. Can't wait to speak to her again. We have a lot to talk about. Right we didn't on. get to uh, a lot of stuff last time, so I'm very excited. Care about yeah. the Muppets? Yes. Paul, <laughs> Paul, can you add flirty to the thing? That would be play. I will add flirty. Oh, I'm that's, the barking. That's a good one. I will add flirty. And eventually hey, who let the dogs out? The Matt. Show. <laughs> I let the dogs out. My my beautiful daughter did, thankfully, because they were going nuts for no reason. Yes. Anyway. Um, but yeah, I, I like that idea. Flirty's a great, a great um I'm gonna add it right attitude. now. Dude, something I can picture it. That's gonna be good. This is great because I've been dying to get rid of one of these. Yeah, if, yeah, do it now, Paul, so we don't have to do it later. Uh goodbye, exuberant. There we go. Exuberance gone. Flirty's <laughs> in. There we are. Which I believe in French means flirty, but no big deal. If you got more than three syllables that don't belong on the wheel. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> not, not not it. It. Yeah, if we can't spell it, it doesn't belong. Yeah. But I, I'm just, Mickey, I'll, I'll, I'll preempt your question. I, the only thing I would also say is just, just um, make sure you follow. Mr. Daniel below and, you know, and just tune in next week too. We got some gr other great shows coming up. We got some amazing artists that are still um, to be seen. And, but we, but we absolutely love having Dan in and, and, and folks that we've had on before, because it's, it's just like, like literally coming home and you know, you feel familiar. I've never met Dan in person. I should, I never met Paul in person. But um, no, but, but it's I'm like pretty sure we're all from the same tribe, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, it's like it's we're like, all part we're of Carver's all, Club. Exactly, we're we're all, family, we're all man. From the same yeah. Club. Well, I'm, I met a I met a guy named Ty Caldwell who's a, a ice carver in Alaska, and he says I'm always sticking out like a sore thumb, and I was like, Yeah, I get it. And now you're in a room full of thumbs. He's like, I didn't think about it that way. And I was like, Yeah, we're all sore thumbs. I mean, I get it. Dude. We're all the same tribe. <laughs> yeah, we, we all love this dumb medium and and just, yeah. just hanging out and having fun and and uh, and carving stuff. I, I I couldn't be happier. So yeah, it's a it's totally fun hang every Thursday. So we'll be here uh, 4 p.m. Uh, Pacific and oh there it is, robot robot. Oh we got robot we got and there, robot right? on the wheel. Right on. Robot. So we have a fun uh, time next week. So uh, well, join us if we get a 4 p.m. Ooh, oh, a flirty, flirty robot! robot. <laughs> it's gonna be next week. It's gonna happen. Does it oh take batteries? That, awesome. <laughs> awesome. So thanks again for joining us. Uh, we appreciate uh, you joining us every week. Uh, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern next Thursday. Uh, we'll see you then. Good night, everyone. Take care. See ya. Bye, everybody.